Hi, this is Kate from Contemporary Geometric Beadwork. I'm going to deconstruct a fun exploding podcast set for you built by Nico Williams. It'll come apart into a podcast bead, a wave section, and a rickrack bangle. Lines, so that's always a little more challenging to snip, but we're not afraid. And so, <laughs> The first thing is identifying the sections and having a look at the build. Nico did an interesting thing here in that he started his wave with a 2 increase section instead of the traditional 2 one, one which is fine and interesting, but it left him with 7 sections of wave, 7 rounds of wave instead of 6, and he wanted his rickrack to only be 6, so he actually started his rickrack down behind there in the last section of the wave. So that was creative of him, really fantastic. But it makes deconstruction just a little more interesting. So what I'm really looking at here is that his rickrack began with two green beads. So now that I've confirmed that from the front, I can come to the back and I can go to the two green beads back here that start the rickrack, identify the single thread that runs between them, and snip it. So. Let me make sure I'm in focus so that you can clearly see. And ideally here, I'm snipping only one thread. And with Fireline, I'm careful. I take my time. Right. As you can see there, we're coming apart and everything will be fine. So I'm going to go along every time I see a set of green increase beads up here. I'm going to evaluate it for snippability. And if it looks like a good bet, I'm going to go ahead and snip it. So I'll just fuss around in here for a few minutes, going around, snipping thread between green beads, but only if I feel that it's a viable bet. So snipping a set like this that's tight and complicated is always beautiful fun. Some people have very soft tension. Uh, some people bead with thread instead of fire line. Those are always easier to deconstruct than tight tension and fire line. But can be done. Can be done. If you're a fire line beater and you want to do deconstructions, you could consider doing only your first round of beads in thread and then picking up your fire line for the body of the piece. That's something that could be done. So if you do make any mistakes in cutting, and this does happen, you know, these things happen, then you really won't have much to fix. If if I had caught a little bit of the other round here, which happily I did not, but if I had, it wouldn't be such a big deal to go back and fix a few beads. In fact, you know, for every 10 exploding sets I make, there may be one or two minor repairs. But the things I can make... Um, you know, and then maybe just fix a bead or two here and there. Things I can make without any fuss are amazing. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And so the thread that attached it to the wave section of the podcast bead can just come right on out. It's no longer needed. And the rickrack section is standing alone. And so here you begin to see what was really going on there. This is a perfectly straight form. It's like a little straight wall. But when it was built on the folded form, it appeared to be a folded something different. It didn't look like a straight wall. But in fact, that's exactly what it was, wasn't it? Just a little wall all the way around. So when you get down to this point, if this were just thread, it would already be peeling away. But because it's this incredibly durable material, it's clinging on like grim death. And so one of the things you can do is you can go up the line and you can kind of wiggle it out and snip it. You see how I can kind of identify this thread here, right here, and I can wiggle it out and wiggle it apart. This is a perfectly valid way to deconstruct a podcast speed, and if you aren't sure what to cut and you've got the time to do this, it can be a very pleasant way to go. And uh, it's just pace to take your time. So look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> Let's just revel in this for a moment. I always love this this part where you can see both things together as one or as three in this case. This is a set of three. 
so to plan and build this rickrack on its own, well, you know, it takes more time than it does to put it on the podcast and take it off. And it's a lot easier to build when it's in a collection than when it's a bunch of loose pieces like this. So wait till you see all the things we're going to make. Okay, time to cut a few more increases, I think. Not that one. <laughs> Down here. Uh -huh. Wondered why it was so easy to identify that one. <laughs> So only the thread between the green beads. That's all I'm snipping. See how it just clings on like grim death? There's, I mean, this, there's a lot to be said for that. This is a very durable thread. And even though it's being battered by winds and high seas, it is still clinging with everything it has to the structure. So, there is a lot to be said for that, you know, and you can see why people are fans of Fireline. For that reason, it's really good to build with, right? It makes great architecture. So uh, here we go, and now this is even more exciting, where we have the Rick Rack as an actual part of the podcast feed. So I'll just revere it for a moment. And the nice thing about building this on the podcast feed is that the tension is supreme. It's exactly what you'd want it to be. It, if you're a tight beater, you are just going to love this opportunity to see what your work looks like when it's not stiff as a board. And nothing against stiff as a board. The time for that is, you know, many and varied. But... If you'd like to have the opportunity to feel your beadwork like a fabric, a soft fabric that is even actually able to fold. I mean, this is crazy. Can you imagine being able to both fold your rickrack like a little accordion, right? It was just folded that way. It doesn't mind, you know? I was just taking it off of a form where it was dressed just like that. But it's hard for me to imagine folding my finished beadwork that way, even with my medium tension. What a gorgeous pattern Nico made, right? So let's finish taking that off. I tend to be pretty meditative when I do this. I'm not just ripping and tearing. I, I love this transition of things being born of the moment of birth. And the parent is just as thrilling as the child here. This is just amazing. Oh, and what an exquisite piece. Look at that. Look at that. So just a few threads to clean up, right? And then, boom. Piece of cake. Nico's wave section is right here, coming off the podcast. It's six rounds, and it begins with the ochre section on top of a tiny little podcast bead. And his colorway is a little complicated. Sometimes, in, like in this case right here, it's not just ochre. I'll try and move up a bit so you can see a little better. It's not just ochre, it's also a little orangey one. But the podcast has two rows here, one blue and one gold, and I'm cutting in the first round above that. Sometimes I'll push through a little bit until I can just feel the tip of the scissors so I can be sure that I'm cutting where I want to cut. So I'll go ahead and cut the increases that I'm sure of. Right? So I'll cut the easy ones first. And then I'll work those open a little bit. And just sort of gently, again, I never really pull and tear. If it comes off quickly, it's just because it leaped off, not because I'm pulling hard. I'm gentle, uh, and that's all it should take if you've done your job and not reinforced through the other rounds. And so here comes his wave section. 
And uh, if you're careful, and you see how I'm kind of supporting with my finger the beads from the new section? And so I'm not just grabbing out here and yanking. I'm supporting the beadwork here because remember, when I take this thread out, it's it's fine, the beadwork doesn't mind, but it only has one thread through it. And so if I were rough with it, that wouldn't be good for the beads. Wouldn't be good for the thread. If I ever get stuck, I'll either snip and pull gently and see if I get more headway, or I'll go to another increase point. But generally, once you get going, you can always find the thread. Just be careful. Be sure before you snip that you understand which thread it is that you're snipping, right? Isn't this cool? I just love this. So have a look here before this comes off completely. So once again, you can see that this is kind of deciding what it wants to be. It was born on the podcast bead, and so it's used to representing as a little zigzag here like this, right? This is what it's, this is how it's been used to being in the womb there on the podcast. But once it comes off and it starts to really stretch its legs, you'll see that it may have more in common with a waveform than with a zigzag. Right now, because it's a point round, a splitter round, it's very pointy. That's what point rounds are all about. But uh, next time you put on a fill round or a pair of increases on every point, if you continue the hexagon increase, you'll see it assume each personality at each step, and every round of the wave will give you a different feeling piece. So right now, it's a bit elbows and knees. It's like that little colt stage, but just another round would smooth it out. Well, you'll enjoy building on this. You could build these layers until they were fully developed. There's no need to take them off of the podcast bead when they're small like this, but this is an experiment and it's to show you how easy it is to take starts off of this bead. Starts that are well crafted with even tension, perfectly to size, and it gives you the opportunity as a designer to be able to enjoy the planning of your colorway where you can see everything bundled together in a, in a kind of a symmetry that makes sense. And so if you want to understand your colors, understand your structure, uh, this is a fantastic mechanism for building architecture that you know you can watch grow in an orderly fashion. So you see, I'm just kind of going from point to point and definitely picking the low hanging fruit. Um, if something comes away cleanly and easily, I give it a little tug. If it doesn't, I just go to the other side of it and try there. So here's Nico's podcast bead emerging from the fray, victorious. It's got a little thread on it that I'm sure would come out. This was a very successful mini exploding set. We got the Rick Rack bangle, the podcast bead came off just fine, and now we've got a wave section that Nico can build into a hyperbolic bangle. So we'll show you, this is obvious, how you might continue this. You just keep building it in one direction or the other, or both, until you're satisfied. And then this one here will be developing into something really beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this deconstruction.